gosh, they have a VR room. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel, The Lady Couture, and welcome to my whimsical little corner of the interwebs. Today I am on another adventure vlog, and you might be forgiven for thinking that I am back in the beautiful city of Bath. In fact, I am not. I am in Buxton, which is nearly the opposite end of the country. Um, Buxton is a small town in the north of Derbyshire, just um, about an hour or so outside of Manchester. But very much like Bath, Buxton is also one of our spa towns here in the UK. And it also went through a period of rebuilding and revival during the 18th century. Um, essentially, the Duke of Devonshire, um, aka the guy who owns Chatsworth, one of our biggest country houses um, just down the road in, in Derbyshire, um, decided he wanted to build a resort to rival um, the very popular Bath. And obviously he chose the existing you know, spa town here of Buxton, you know, which dates back, you know, has the, the spa waters have been used here and known about here for you know, thousands of years. The Romans um, settled here um, and much like Bath, the only other town in the country that the Romans designated with the Aqua um, name tag. So Bath was designated Aqua Sulis and here in Buxton it was Aqua Arnamiche. I think that's how you say it. I'm not very good at my Latin pronunciation. Don't use that every day. Um, but yeah, essentially that's um, devoted to the goddess um, Arnamiche. Um, who is thought to be the, the goddess that was worshipped by the, the local um, British tribes here in the area. And that roughly translates as she in the sacred grove. Obviously behind me here is Buxton's own version of the Crescent, the Buxton Crescent. Um, and in there is um, the original spa hotel that was developed in the 1780s uh, by the Duke of Devonshire. And if some of you recognise it, that might be because we have actually been here before in a vlog. Um, way, way back in, I think it was 2021, um, Mr. BLC and I actually stayed here in the newly refurbished spa hotel that opened that year. Um, and it was just as things were reopening up after the lockdowns during the pandemic. Um, and it was an amazing stay in beautiful newly refurbished hotel. Um, obviously an 18th century hotel, 18th century spa. And um, yeah, Mr. Bilsey stayed there and vlogged it um, for a trip and it was amazing because obviously it was just after the pandemic, there was hardly anybody staying and we went in the spa in the morning and there was nobody there. We literally had a private spa to ourselves, it was amazing. We have been back a couple of times since and it's not quite as exclusive <laughs> anymore as you might expect. Um, but it's by no means any less a, a beautiful place to stay, a beautiful spa to visit as well. Um, and you do actually uh, bathe in the, the, the spa waters that rise out of the ground here in, from the springs. Um, so yeah, so if you want to go and uh, check out that vlog, um, feel free, you'll find that on my channel. Uh, there's a mini five minute vlog, um, kind of the highlights of our trip. And there's a much longer vlog um, where Mr. BLC and I um, talk about our, our stay and our experience um, in, in the spa as well. So yeah, do feel free to go and check those out. But why am I here today? Well, sadly, Mr. BLC and I are not here for a spa session today, as lovely as that would be on this uh, rather chilly grey November day here in the UK. Um, but we're here for the next best thing, which is a costume exhibition, which explains why you're watching this on my channel. So what are we here to see? Well, the Buxton Heritage Trust, which is located in this little building behind me down here, that's the visitor center, um, and the original pump rooms um, where you could take the waters. Um, yeah, that's owned and run by the Buxton Heritage Trust. Um, in conjunction with the people who run the, the hotel and sauna. Um, and inside the hotel or attached to the hotel is the 18th century assembly rooms. And in the assembly rooms is an exhibition of costume just for this weekend. It's only on for three days. So I have dashed across to, to come and see it. Um, and it is called Timeless Threads and it's an exhibition of Georgian and Regency costumes. But what's interesting about them is that all costumes from costume dramas. So they've all been seen on film or TV in recent years. Um, so yeah, so I'm excited to take you along, see what's inside. Um, I understand that there's about 20 costumes in the display, along with props and accessories um, relevant to the different productions as well. Um, I believe that there's going to be uh, pieces from the Sharp TV series. There's going to be pieces from Hornblower. Um, there's also pieces from Master and Commander as well. Um, so there's going to be quite a few military pieces. Um, and of course, Alla Lydia Bennett, you know, what is a man about his regimentals? <laughs> 
Um, so yeah, and I understand there are some gowns and things in here as well. So I'm excited to go inside and have a look. And yeah, let's, uh, let's go explore. sweeping down your long gown, isn't it? <laughs> I think that's Georgiana, Duchess of Devonshire. Thank you. 
So it's actually really fascinating to be able to get up close and behind the gowns because obviously these are gowns that will be made for film extras. Um, so they've been made quickly and they've been made so they can be very easily adjusted. So you can see there's no fastening on this gown. It would literally just be pinned closed on whoever was the closest size, you know, to, to be wearing it. Um, and yeah, and it's open right the way down the back. Well, you would assume that she would obviously have um, a base garment underneath um, some kind of bodice petticoat or something like that, here for modesty um, sake at the very least, and to give it the, you know, your, your basic period um, undergarment shaping. But yeah, but the, this gown itself is just really simply pinned on and very simply constructed. These two gowns have been made from original, possibly early 19th century saris, um, so they have a really beautiful um, kind of historical feel to them um, which you know you just don't get with modern modern fabrics um. Again, this one is so simply constructed and just pins closed across the back and it might even tie off there as well to make it really adjustable. The delicacy of these fabrics is just something else. And again, this one's just so simple, just like a, you know, a Grecian chiton style style of dress, pinned at the shoulders, gathered in around the empire waist um, with a, you know, a, a braided ribbon. another gown that's just so simply constructed it literally just fastens there and then the sleeves are created by basically tacking in these pleats on the back and then the same on the front as well um, and then the, the pleating at the back waist here kind of just hides the the opening um, but I think oh no it might actually be I can just see it is seamed from this point down to the hem um, but again, that's just so simple, so simple. This is a really pretty detail with this ruched draping across the front of the bust. And obviously you've got the kind of the under layer underneath as well. That's really sweet and pretty, isn't it? I like that. Thank you. 
don't underestimate the size of Regency shawls. They're huge. I really like the construction of this one. So this is a bib front gown, um, which basically means the front opens, but quite often with bib front gowns, um, this section here will fasten up to the front and hide this bit under here. Um, but this one fastens the opposite way, um, and it's made a feature of the front closing there. That's really fun, I quite like that. That's interesting and different. So this is a banyan, which is basically a Regency dressing gown. And I've decided I need a beaded embroidered dressing gown in my life. Okay, so we've just come out of the, the Timeless Threads costume exhibition. That was really interesting. It was lovely to see all the costumes up really close. It's one, sometimes one of those things when you go to um, a little niche exhibition like this, um, the costumes and things that are on display are not necessarily going to be behind glass, you know, or anything like that. Um, and they weren't even behind a barrier. You could literally get right up close to them. So I hope you enjoyed some of the footage that I managed to get um, of the, the, the gowns and the, uh, the military uniforms um, that were on display in the exhibition there. Um, obviously, there weren't any that were you know, specifically worn by leads necessarily in any of the, the TV shows, um, so they were mostly background character costumes. Um, but nevertheless, you know, it's really fascinating to, to see them and see all the details on them um, and see how they're constructed um, and, you know, how they very quickly can be adapted and changed um, to suit different people wearing them. It's, yeah, it's just really fascinating and interesting to see. While we were in the exhibition, uh, we got chatting to the lovely Gabby and her partner Matt, um, who are uh, curating and moderating the exhibition this afternoon. Um, and I will I'll pop uh, Gabby's Instagram link down below because she's another historical costumer like me, so you feel free to go and check her out. Um, yes, yeah, so it was lovely to chat to those guys, um, and uh, thank you for watching my videos. Hi. <laughs> um, but yes, Matt, uh, very kindly on behalf of the, uh, the Buxton Crescent Heritage Trust, um, uh, gifted us um, entry to the experience exhibition in the building just behind us. Um, so that was completely unexpected and I'm, I'm very thankful and grateful um, to, be, to be given that. So please enjoy this additional bit of footage um, of the history of Buxton um, that we filmed in the, the Buxton Crescent experience. I have to say, this was an absolutely fantastic little museum. Um, if you ever get a chance to come to Buxton, um, please do go and, and uh, see the experience. Um, it was yes, so much bigger than I was expecting. It's um, across two floors, several rooms. Um, you go on a VR um, balloon flight <laughs> over Buxton. There's lots of interactive elements in the museum to, to play with and uh, uh, touch, feel. Um, so it's great for, for little ones as well. And yeah, it was just really fascinating and really not what I was expecting. So uh, yeah, please do enjoy this little bit of extra footage.
this is the, the shrine of St. Anne or St. Anne's Well. Um, where this is the, the spring water that comes out. Oh, it's quite oh, it's warm. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> it's really cold today. Yes. So that's the famous Buxton spring waters. And that water is actually drinkable as it comes out of the ground. And obviously this is um, dedicated to St Anne, um, very much as things became Christianised in this country um, in the post-Roman era. Um, sacred spaces and shrines and altars, um, places dedicated to the older pagan gods, um, often were converted to, to Christian saints. And this one um, became um, dedicated to St Anne. Um, but it's nice to know that the the older links to Armenia um, still exist, and we still know about that today. Our story begins over 4,000 million years ago. The same droplets once drunk by dinosaurs have been recycled by nature over and over again and may now be sipped by us today. Remember, rainfall over the Peak District today will not emerge from the spring for another 5,000 years. Visitors travel from far and wide to bathe and take the waters. And with the fifth juice improvements, Buxton developed as a fashionable spa town. Evidence suggests that by the 19th century, the waters were being bottled commercially to be carried beyond the borders of the town. The water still flows free throughout the year from St. Anne's Well and now at the pump room. So these little boxes are actually beauty spot boxes. So you can carry around the little patches that you use to, to pop on your face, which was very fashionable in the, the 18th century. Um, I had no idea that they kept them in little boxes like this. And these ones are specifically um, decorated um, with images of Buxton on, which is really quite interesting.
This is what the Crescent looked like in the 1990s, all boarded up and derelict, absolutely awful. And you've just seen some clips there from the behind the scenes um, of the restoration and all the beautiful historical details that still existed within the derelict hotel. Um, and then, of course, they restored it to the, the beautiful spa hotel that exists here today. And, I mean, you've got to admit that it looks so much better on the outside now than it does here in the 1990s. They've done a fabulous job, and if you want to see more details um, of actually going to the spa um, and staying in the, the beautiful 18th century um, Crescent Hotel, uh, do go check out my other video um, on my channel, which I'll link either up above or, or down below in the description. Um, so yeah, you can go and uh, see what it's like to stay and go to the spa here in Buxton. fabulous display of Wedgwood crockery on the ceiling in this room and the lady who's uh, on duty in the museum at the moment is has very kindly told me uh, and I hope I get the, <laughs> remember this correctly um, but this is all um, Wedgwood crockery from different eras so the dark blue is 18th century the light blue is Victorian the yellow is uh, 20th century and uh, the white is modern Wedgwood um, and if you go across to the, the, the pump room uh, visitor centre across the road, um, they actually serve their cups of tea and coffee on wedge of crockery in there as well. Right. So now I have been told that I need to watch the video um, of the Duke of Devonshire um, over here in this picture frame, and then we're going to go play a game on the table. <laughs> Oh no, he's moving. <gasps> Before I built this splendid crescent, people used to say little in the way of praise for Buxton. They complained about its dreary and dismal location in these dramatic hills. People came for the water, our healing water. But the journey to get here on difficult roads deterred many from even considering coming. Bath has a wonderful crescent. And in part, this was my inspiration. The lack of appealing places to stay in Buxton and of activities to keep people occupied has always been a concern of visitors. They murmured that there was simply nothing to do except bathe in the thermal spring. Because me being me, I have to do the promenading game. Oh, have I got to do it in order? Am I not allowed to? <laughs> got to have breakfast first. Always start your day with breakfast. An easily digestible meal of hot spiced bread and cakes, butter, freshly cooked fish or oatmeal. Right, now we've had some breakfast, we're allowed to go promenading. Her ladyship is going for a walk in Buxton. You'll need to get her to all four sites in order for her to have enough exercise. Don't let her get lost. Well, I'm going to come stand in the middle of the table. I might actually be able to see what I'm doing now. Oh my goodness. Oh no, I think Scott might... Mr BLC might have to hold the camera. This is basically... It's like a tilt table game. So I think I've got to roll her... Hang on, let's. Oh my god, I need to bag. This is complicated. I wasn't planned for this today. 
so I think yeah so I say tilt so in the, each of the four corners it says tilt and basically um, it's gonna roll uh, Lady Bridgewater around the map so we need to go down to the Serpentine Walks, a popular route for promenading along the River Wye. <laughs> oh no, I'm going to have to go to the other side of the paper. Oh my god, this is effort. No, don't get lost. <laughs> I think she's drunk. She had <laughs> too much wine with her breakfast, maybe. She's heading for her all-important bath, but which bath should she use? Help her find the right one that fits her social status. Okay. Oh my goodness me. What? Tap her door to find her ladyship's bath. Right, number one. <laughs> Oops, this is the gentleman's bath. <laughs> oh no, that's the poor people's bath. <laughs> She's not allowed in there either. Because of course the gentry don't mix with uh, the lower classes. Oh no, that's the cold bath. <laughs> it's literally going to be the last one that I'm going to pick, isn't it? Okay, so once you've bathed in the water, you need to make sure you drink some water as well. They have a VR room where you go on a balloon flight over Buxton. was in here it's amazing so we're now going into the georgian apothecary so we can basically pick a special token of the different uh, diseases and uh, and we're going to go see the apothecary and he's going to tell us how we, how to cure ourselves hello mr apothecary man oh there's bugs on there <laughs> It's too much fine living that's given you this gout, but if you appreciate a good feed, then you may enjoy this remedy. You'll need to stuff that old goose with chopped kittens, incense, wax, and rye flour. Once you've roasted and eaten it, simply apply the dripping to your painful joints. If that sounds too extreme, then perhaps try a health-giving drink containing licorice, coriander seeds, raisins, and brandy. Although do be careful, this mix might leave you on the chain pot for a while. But better out than in, say I. 
If you enjoyed this video of our little trip out to Buxton, please do give this video a like by clicking the little thumbs up icon down below. And if you can, leave me a comment because that really helps my channel out. I'd also love you to subscribe so you can be notified when my next video goes out. Uh, you will find me often out and about at museums and events that have historical or costume related interest. Or you'll sometimes find me in my sewing room creating costumes to wear to some events as well. Um, so yes, yeah, so if you're interested in that kind of thing, please do subscribe to my channel and follow along on my next adventures. In the meantime, thank you again so much for watching and I'll hopefully see you in my next video. Bye! And Buxton here was known as Aqua. A oh no, I forgot the name. Going down in the basement on the tiny tower. <laughs>